today on the show, I'm excited to be chatting with Sandra Hay. Sandra is a love and relationship coach, helping single women attract their soulmate and get the relationship they desire by loving themselves first and creating an empowering relationship with themselves as a basis for every other relationship. As a result of love coaching, women love themselves more, gain confidence, tap into their self-worth, and attract the man and relationship that takes their life to the next level. After years and years of meeting the wrong men and doubting if she will ever be able to find her Mr. Right, Sandra turned towards it turned inwards to build her own confidence, uncover her own worth, and love herself. This journey led her to attract her soulmate in six months, get married 18 months later, and start a business to empower other women to find love. Sandra lives with her amazing husband, Neil, serves clients around the world, and celebrates new couples and women who are stepping into their power and creating a life of love. Sandra, so nice to have you here on the show today. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm so excited to be chatting with you today. So for the audience's context, Sandra and I, we connected via Matchmaker, I want to say about two months ago. Yeah, something like that. Something like that, where I think, Sandra, you mentioned that you'd listened to one of the episodes, I think it was Laura. And you yeah. just immediately connected with it. And that was such a fascinating episode that I had with Laura just talking about uncertainty in our lives. And, and, you know, the work that you do often comes down to dealing with uncertainty that you have within yourself and trying to understand where do you find yourself when it comes to relationships, relationship to yourself and relationship in your love life. And so today, you know, with all the findings that you've discovered throughout your time, Sandra, through your own personal journey, through your own coaching practice, helping women discover their Mr. Right and discover their own sense of self-love and self-identity. I'm really excited to be chatting today with you to discuss about this idea and topic of inner and outer attraction. How can you create this type of energy that you are loving yourself and attracting inwards towards yourself and how that then feeds into external attractive forces. So mm-hmm. looking towards, you know, a love partner, a love, love relationship. And so mm-hmm. I would love to kind of start off first, you know, Sandra kind of mentioned there in the intro as part of your journey, you know, you went through years and years and years, you mentioned of, you know, finding oh, yeah. the wrong <laughs> men throughout, throughout your time with dating and how you were struggling also with your identity at that time. And, and so I'm curious, how did you, you know, first go about, how did you mentally make this transition towards, you know, transforming your life for greater mm-hmm. attraction? Well, I have to say, uh, at the time that wasn't like voluntary, uh, transition. <laughs> like I got inspired and one day I decided now I will change. I really, for me, that was like my rock bottom. Like in one week I had series of events like that were just coming one after another. So I had one guy who treated me very badly. Then I had car exit. And then just a few little things. It's almost like universe slapping you in the face. And then again and again, it's almost like wake up. Mm -hmm. Because after that week, when I look in my life with all these series of events happen, it's like, I'm single and I don't like that. I'm overweight. I don't like that. I don't have money that I want. I don't have job that I want. I was, I just felt so lonely and so like at the bottom, like this is not life that I wanted for myself, how I found myself in this place. So when you say like mental shift, it really came from that. Like there is no, nowhere else to go, but up, there is no other option, but to change because I felt so horrified when I looked at my life. And, you know, I I feel that sometimes we need these events to just remind us to take closer look at what is happening. Mm -hmm. Because I remember that Tony Robbins is saying either you change from inspiration or desperation. And unfortunately, 80% change from pain. Rarely somebody will change from from place of inspiration. And for me, that was definitely case. Like I felt this tremendous pain in all these different areas of my life. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? I will just stop now. Like I stopped dating. I stopped everything. And I turned to one thing that I know well, and that is studying and learning. But this time that was learning about myself and studying myself. 
So basically for six months, I had two things like I was working and I was working with myself. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it every day, like two jobs, you know? <laughs> and it was like, I will take a course and I will do everything. I will listen to podcasts and do all the exercise that they say. I will read the book, the same thing. I will work with a coach. And like, I was just implementing everything because I had nothing to lose. Like I felt that I'm at such bottom that there is nothing left to lose. The only way that you can go up And I have nothing to lose by trying this exercise or or Mm -hmm. doing this. Even if it doesn't work, I have nothing to lose. And I think that was one of the things that really propelled me so quickly because I was working on myself on all these different different levels and spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Like I I was eating healthy, exercising, changing my beliefs, um, examining my emotions, why I feel like this, doing a lot of healing work, meditating, visualizing, like everything. So I didn't realize back then, but I was really um, implementing this holistic approach to Mm self-love and self-care, which I now teach my clients, because back then I was working on all these different levels without realizing that I'm doing that. And that's why in six months, I lost 50 pounds, like first time in my life I was healthy. You know, it was like, okay, I was dieting all my life. How this happened just like that? Uh, it, within six months, I went back to online dating. And when I went within a week, I matched with my current husband. And also that journey set me on the track to start business that I'm having now helping other women. So basically for me, that transformation was really, really life changing. And it started not from something nice, but for some, from something which was really painful and really scary. Yeah, it's that point you mentioned where you either grow from desperation or inspiration. It's unfortunate, like you mentioned, I think you said it was 80% of the time that people Yeah, that's grow what from. they are saying. Statistics are 80% of people changing from pain. Yeah, but you know, one of the great things is like you mentioned that there's really no place else to go but up when you're in that state of desperation. So it's in, I guess, your benefit to at least try to grow, to try and, you know, learn new things, develop new things about yourself. And so doing all that self inner work really helps propel you towards understanding more about yourself. Like you were mentioning, I'm sure, you know, working on yourself is probably even more than a full time job. I know how difficult it is, you know, to learn about yourself. And for so many people out there who are struggling internally, where am I? What is my identity? Doing all that self inner work takes a lot of time and effort. And I think there's a hesitation maybe I don't know I'm curious to learn from you like there's a hesitation to wanting to put that time and effort in because you think oh it's going to take so much time and effort I don't have this time and effort you know it's it, there's no guaranteed payoff I, I'm curious were those kind of thoughts playing into your mind mm-hmm. as, as well well I mean I I feel there are a few things when it comes working on ourselves first is fear because it is really scary to look within and see who you are as a person because you will not see all the nice things and that is very scary to see also that you hurt other people that you've hurt uh, yourself first that you've done so damage to your body to your emotion and uh, you know like there there are so many things inside that really takes a lot of courage to look into them and then when you look into them to you know have compassion for yourself to have mm-hmm. that thought, you know what, I was doing the best that I knew and that was enough. Now I know better. Now I will do differently. But I feel that people are so afraid to look in into these wounds, to look into their pain, to look into pain that they've caused others because they are not nice things and it's very hard to work through them. So for me, one of the big things was uh, expressing my emotions like I grew up as don't show your weakness, don't show your emotions, always show as, you know, as strong. And I never discussed my emotions within my family. I never discussed them with my friends. So I grew up as somebody who doesn't show my emotions. And that hurt me in so many different ways. But when I was on this journey, I reached that point. Now I have to express these emotions. And it is so scary. Like that was you know, like you have mm-hmm. this huge fear. If I show you my emotion, you will hurt me. So mm-hmm. it's, it, it, sometimes it feels like I want to say something, but somebody is choking you and you cannot even say it out loud. So you have to, like, for me, that was a huge thing to work through. But I knew that on the other side is the person that I want to become. 
So we will face so many demons, so many fears, so many things that we didn't want to face through years. And that is a scary, scary thing to do. On the other hand, I feel that we are living in the world where we want everything instantly. Like yep. I press a button, I get it. I want, a, I don't know, a t-shirt, I press a button, it's here tomorrow. Like mm-hmm. we are living in instant world and with inner work, there is no instant Everything yep. takes time, you know, like, for example, when I started visualizing, I was visualizing for six months that, will, that I will find my soulmate. And I set my goal, like in April, I set the goal, I will meet him in October. Is there a guarantee? Absolutely not. Will I meet him in October? I don't know. The only thing I can do is to have faith and to do the work. There is no guarantee. Nobody gave you a paper and said, you know what? If you do this every day within six months, this will happen. Nobody does that. And mm-hmm. I think that is, you know, like that is the, that piece of faith, like you have to have faith that this thing will work and people don't have faith. People don't have trust. If it, you know, the same thing with diet, like, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. And after two weeks, they lost two pounds. Oh, I wanted to lose five. This is not working. Let me go back where I started. You know, mm-hmm. we right. are expecting too much too soon. And I feel that is that bit of, you know, that's, there is no patience, there is no faith enough to keep doing this work. And it's much easier to look everywhere externally, except for here, you know, because it's so easy to, to have something tangible, to see something, to touch something, than mm-hmm. to work with something that is not tangible, that is, you know, like something that you cannot see with your physical eyes. Right. Yeah. It's so scary to look in words like you were mentioning and see the demons that are within yourself, all of the learnings that are rather the emotional type of frameworks that you grew up with and incorporating those into your subconscious mind and seeing this is how I think, this is what I think about myself, Mm -hmm. this is how I approach things. And then you're like, wait, no, 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 no. This is not what I want to be thinking. But Mm -hmm. why am I thinking this? And Similarly, I think you, like you mentioned, it's because we live in such an instant world now where everything is at the snap of a finger, mm-hmm. things can get done, but this inner work doesn't all get accomplished overnight. It takes months, it takes years. For, for some people, it takes decades because of all of this wiring that we have been, been subjected to throughout our upbringing, through you know, social influences, family influences, cultural influences, whatever the case may be. And, and so... You know, you, you're a very big proponent of in order to really seek out that external attractive energy, you need to first love yourself, like you've mentioned. Yeah. From your own experience going through your own self-love journey, what, and you kind of alluded to it already, what were some of the roadblocks and limiting factors when it came to your soul, your mindset, your emotions in order to finally break through to finally embrace this journey of self-love and inner attraction? Well, I feel that self-love is lifelong journey, at least for me in this lifetime. I know that that is my lesson <laughs> for life because it's almost like, you know, they compare it to onion. You have all these different, different layers. So you learn to love yourself on this level, but then you discover a new one. And then finally you master that, oh, there is a new one. And then you mm. master that, well, guess what? There is more. So it's really <laughs> like this lifelong journey but when you approach it with curiosity it's so amazing like Mm -hmm. wow i really done this oh that is very interesting but people approach it with such like oh my goodness i thought that i dealt with that now it's showing up you see it's not working i should give up you know like instead of approaching it with curiosity and with wonder we approach it with such kind of judgment and Mm -hmm. almost disappointment that we are that person instead of somebody else so as I have mentioned, for me, this is really long journey because I grew up with such low confidence, low self-esteem. I was overweight. So that really affected the way I see myself, the way I see my body. And in this physical world, that is something that, you know, like society told us we have to look like this. And if we don't, we are not worthy and we are not beautiful. And, you know, like all mm-hmm. of these things. And that really affected my confidence and self-esteem. So it really took me a long time to start accepting and loving myself. And, you know, you reach one level and that comes to next level, next level and next level. So there, I mean, I can talk about obstacles on this journey. I mean, there are so many obstacles, 
first of, you are so often reminded of what is wrong with you. Let's say wrong, you know, like mm-hmm. I don't consider that there is anything wrong, but just we will see it in that way. I will wake up every day and see I am overweight. I will wake up every day and see that I don't have enough money. I will wake up every day and see that guy that I liked five years ago, he's married now and I'm not. Like we are reminded so often about these things that we don't have and we want. And because we see them, we think what we do is not working and that that affects our our self-esteem and our confidence and and self-love. So it really takes a lot of intention and attention to change these things, to really, again, reframe it from fear to faith and to say, you know what, no matter where I am now, I can be wherever I want to be. So with that, we really have to um, connect with that spiritual component. It's not enough Mm -hmm. only to see ourselves as physical self or even to use our brain and our mental level. Sometimes we really have to go to that spiritual level and have faith that things will work out. Because when we do that, that is that shortcut that we are looking for. If I connect with that level, then there is no way that I will feel anything less but love for myself. On that level, when there is faith, you cannot feel disappointment when there is faith. You cannot feel fear. So when you go there, you can usually find what you are looking for. But people don't go there often. And if they go, they come back very very soon and see what Mm. is it here. And again, disappointment and all of that. So what I would really like to say, I mean, it just came to me at this moment. I like to see where is your, let's say, base level when it comes, Mm -hmm. like when you see yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever area you want, you can see what is your base level of emotion right now and then work from there. So for example, your current level is a worry or frustration or disappointment, whatever it is. So you can know that by working on your mindset and your emotions, you can start changing this um, emotional level and bringing it up to hope and optimism and enthusiasm and eventually love. So that is the journey that we should be seeing in front of us. And we should get really excited if we go from worry to frustration, because that is a huge step. And when we go from frustration to hope, that is a huge step. So we should be really excited about these small changes because that is the way to get to love. Love is like the highest level vibration of all emotions. So if we start taking these small steps and getting excited about small things, that can be really thing that propel us for, forward and keep, keeps us going. On, on this journey, which I mean, for some people can be long and I'm one of them, definitely. <laughs> no, definitely. I love that approach of taking it in terms of a more small incremental piecemeal kind of approach versus kind of a more quick fix, kind of all of it is consolidated down into, you know, a matter of weeks or months. If you're looking mm-hmm. at it more short term minded, if you and I think the point you brought up earlier about leading with a sense of curiosity instead of judgment that's a great way Mm -hmm. to frame how to actually approach this entire journey because like you mentioned you get these reminders and when you're looking at oh emotionally when the environment is situated in this particular manner it brings me down to a negative emotional state or when i see a certain image of you know a past relationship i've had it 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 you know puts me in a bad mood for whatever reason in terms of kind of what the past relationship kind of status looked like And so I think going in terms of small incremental steps, leading with curiosity builds up that confidence that where Mm -hmm. those don't affect you. And like you mentioned, you can you can situate yourself in that spiritual world, that spiritual domain much longer rather than being pulled out of it. Like you mentioned, when you see Mm -hmm. these sorts of stimuli that, you know, reengage you back into that emotional negative space. And, And so. Now that you you're happily married, I'm sure this entire journey for some people, they might think, oh, it's all well and done. The highest form Mm -hmm. of vibration of love. I've achieved it having a having a love partner for life. Do you still keep up now with having been married? Do you still keep up with that understanding? Where is your emotional baseline and how have you found that helpful towards your relationship with your husband? as well as just generally other relationships, maybe with business, with friends, just all relationships at life. 
Mm. Well, I really want to remind people is like getting married is almost not a goal. It's only a beginning because for me, relationships are our greatest teachers and every relationship is here to teach us something. So when you get married, it's not like, woohoo, I <laughs> achieved my goal and let's celebrate now. Yeah, you celebrate for a while, but then you see, oh man, there are new lessons to learn now. How come? <laughs> because now you see yourself in the eyes of somebody who is so close to you. And it's such a different level of working on yourself when you have somebody who is so close to you. Because I remember at the beginning of relationship, you know, you don't open up completely. You don't allow your partner to see every part of yourself. But then COVID comes and guess what? We are together 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's very interesting because last year, when that happened and couples started being together 24 seven, unfortunately, so many broke up. So many had problems because they never looked into their, their relationship so closely and they never actually spent that much time together. And now when they did, it's like, who is this person? Like, why am I with this person? Then they started seeing all these problems. I always compare last year, like having a huge magnifying glass over your life because now there are no distractions. There is no pubs and cinemas and restaurants and friends and going out and travels. Now you are where you are. And this is close look at your life because now when all distractions are removed, you are left with your baseline. So do you like it or not? A lot of people unfortunately didn't like what they see. On the other hand, other relationship became much stronger because you met your partner on new level. And for me, it was really exciting because you really met your partner on new level and you allowed him to see you on, on completely new level. And allowing somebody to see you in that way, it is in some ways very scary and in other ways very liberating because it's like, well, if that person is really capable of loving me as I am completely, mm -hmm. it's like, wow. Probably it means that I'm not that bad, you know, because, <laughs> right, because we still have these insecurities and we will still hide some things of, from our, you know, of ourselves from our partner. And now when they see everything, it's like, okay, this is so amazing. Now I can show this to the rest of the world. So when you see yourself through eyes of somebody else, it really, it really can help a lot your self-love and your confidence and self-esteem, not from level, okay, finally, I found somebody to spend the rest of my life with, but now you are seeing yourself through somebody else's eyes. And I think that is such a beautiful mirror to see yourself in. Yeah, I love that entire take, that entire perspective on the matter in terms of Yes, once you find a partner, once you get married, like you mentioned, it's it's a it's you know a great celebration in the midst of the moment. But then it's like still with the entire journey of uh, embracing this attractive energy and in loving yourself, it's still a matter of a lifelong journey. You learn so many different things of having in, in the sense of having this mirror in another person and seeing mm -hmm. how do they perceive me, and then I, it helps a lot because, like you mentioned, these insecurities that we have, we still hold on to them and we think negatively about ourselves as a result of them. But when you have that mirror that can work on those with you, that can give you that reassurance, maybe it's something that you shouldn't feel ashamed about. Maybe that's something that mm -hmm. they absolutely admire and love about you. And they're like, oh, wait, someone else yeah, is thinking I mean, differently. It is, it, is, it is really amazing to see that because, for example, to me personally, that helped a lot to open up even, you know, like, I'm spending a lot of time on social media as, you know, like creating content and all this. And now I feel that I even feel more, more free to show all parts of myself to my audience, because why not? Why wouldn't you love me when others do? So it's really, it helps on so many different levels. And I mean, I just gave here example of relationship teaching you about self-love, but it teaches you about so many other things, you know? I always considered my journey towards self-love as ultimate attraction and somebody that will attract love because self-love is vibration of love and what you will attract there is only love. I always say to women, the only reason why they didn't attract their person is because they are still not on level of their desire. 
And that means that there is work to do to bring yourself up. Is that self-love, mindset, confidence, self-worth, whatever it is, or removing some blocks from the past. There can be so many different things from, for different people, but the only reason why you don't have your desire is because you are not on level of that desire. When you are, if that is, let's say, self-love for some people, when you are on that level, then it's easy. Then you are attracting only that. Then every wrong guy, you just see that he's wrong. You don't give him attention. You don't give him time because he is not on the same vibration. It's impossible that you will, you know, spend time mm -hmm. with him. So that is what I'm really trying to teach women. That's why self-love is so important because it's almost like a shortcut to that level of love, you know, working mm -hmm. on myself and ta -da -da -da, I have a partner now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy where it's this paradoxical thing where the long journey of self-love ends up being the shortcut that people are really looking for when they actually are rather trying to search and seek out these other shortcut types of activities, mechanisms, mm -hmm. if you want to call them, when in reality, it's the long-term approach that is the short-term approach in reality. Yeah. And the work that you're doing to help women, you know, do that self inner work to be able to unpack and unlayer a lot of these psychological wirings and emotional thought patterns that they've developed over the years and uncover and become more confident in themselves, be curious to learn about themselves is doing absolute wonders. And, and plenty of women are now, you know, attracting inwardly and then attracting externally when it comes to their, their love life as well. And so, you know, Sandra, this has been such a great conversation. What I like to do at the end of each and every single one of my episodes is this final segment I call the three keys to relationship. And so this is a segment where I ask guests three questions to gauge their own insights and philosophy when it comes to relationship management. Mm -hmm. And these pertain to any relationships. So friends, family, romantic partners, business colleagues, what have you. And these aren't quick fire questions at all either. So I'd love to hear you expand on them. And so the first question I have is, what's your number one relationship red flag? Relationship red flag. Oh, that is a very good question. But again, for me, um, I would say for me, that is entirely my, again, I will, I will see it from this internal perspective, because it, when you are so in touch with yourself and with your energy, you really feel when somebody's energy is so off. And so not aligned with yours. So for me, that is enough. I don't need anything externally. I don't need anyone to say something or do something to really say, you, you know what, you are not for me. If I feel here that our energies are not aligned for me, that is enough not to go ahead. And I know that a lot of people don't do that. That's why they are looking for red flags because they are looking for somebody to physically do something so they will say mm -hmm. okay that is that is a red flag so i wouldn't say that because for me that would be so general thing to to say we all have our matches we all have our matches even if somebody's red flag for me maybe for somebody else there are a match and they should be be they should be in relationship so red flag as general i wouldn't say as do you mean like any type of behavior, like to give you an example like that, or I'm just thinking like, you know, is it like some, something that somebody says or it's any type of behavior, like what would, what your question really refers to? No, I think even what you've been saying mm -hmm. kind of reshapes the way you even perceive what a red flag means, I mm -hmm. think. In the way that you were just describing it makes complete sense to me in the sense that there's a multitude of red flags and where that stems from is like you mentioned the internal vibration, that energy that you're able to, you're able to understand, is there some sort of alignment here? Do I, as people will say, vibe with another person or is, yes. is there something off here? And I think that's a great way where you do this self-love work, where you're able to understand the type of energy that you want to cultivate in, inside of you, as well as what type of energy do you want to be attracted to. And mm. that leads as a guiding force towards understanding what type of behaviors, like you were mentioning, what type of behaviors, what type of actions constitute being red flags. So I well, think that's... that's 
Uh, yeah, I, I just want to say something. I'm, I'm saying this because women are coming to me and let's say she met this guy and, you know, now they are in this relationship and things are not going well. So she's like, should I break up? Should I continue with him? And all that. And when we dig deeper and, uh, you know, at the end, for example, they break up and she realized that he's complete maniac and I should never be with him. And I don't know why I always attract this type of people and blah, blah, blah. And then we dig deeper and then we realize from the very beginning, she felt that she shouldn't be with this person. Mm -hmm. She felt that there is something off, but she pursued it and she continued being with this person. So it's on some, uh, in some respect, like you don't trust yourself from the very beginning. And just because somebody not, um, they didn't necessarily do anything wrong. Like they didn't say anything offensive. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't lie to you. Like they are behaving okay, but you feel that there is something wrong. And we don't follow this feeling. We don't trust it. That's why we are waiting for a red flag and guy at the end to shout at you, to slam doors at your face or lie to you or hide that he has family or whatever it is, because we knew from the very beginning that something is wrong, but we didn't trust the feeling. We needed to see something physical in order to say, you know what, I shouldn't do this. And I, I, I'm saying this as a reminder to women, especially because women have much stronger intuition. So if you would listen to that, you don't need to wait for red flag. You can just stand from the very beginning. You know mm -hmm. what? Something is not congruent here. Like even if you study body language, uh, we don't necessarily know what body language is and how people should behave, but we feel that there is something incongruent, like his words and his expressions and his body language is not congruent. And we feel that because it's universal language, but because we don't understand it, we try to say, well, I will give him another chance. Well, maybe there everything is right. So yeah, I would really like to remind everyone, don't wait for red flags, trust yourself. <laughs> Yo, I absolutely love that perspective, trusting your intuition. And I think that a lot of that comes like you, you've been discussing Sandra through that self-love work, being able to gain that confidence. So, so I love that take. So the qu second question I have is a little bit of a converse of that. What's the most underrated relationship quality in your opinion? Most underrated relationship quality. You know what? I think it's having fun, like really having fun with your partner. I think that is so underrated because we are all adults. We are all serious and we all have to be very serious about our life. But if you would just prioritize playfulness and having fun with your partner, that means that you cultivate joy in your relationship. And that means you cultivate love because joy and love are on the same level. So for me, that is very underrated because people don't pay attention to it. You know, they just feel the, they see these other qualities, like, does he support me? Does he uh, earn enough money? Is he successful? Is he working on himself? Does he want to have family? Like we are looking in all these values that are important. But if we would see like, am I having fun with this man? Do mm -hmm. we like do some fun things? Am I really enjoying being in, in this relationship and he, in his company? So I think that that is very underrated. No, I couldn't agree anymore because I think a lot of it comes back to that curiosity of wanting to explore what does it mean to be in a relationship and have an experience where we share a space together. Like you mentioned, a lot of the world is so serious or looking at those values, which are still very important values, as you mentioned, but the fun, the joy, which is where sometimes relationships, the idea of losing that spark, that's where that idea comes from. So being able to constantly have fun, like I've always been of the belief that, you know, just be like an inner, have your inner child continue to exist within yourself and always yeah. explore that inner curiosity, that inner childlikeness in yourself and, and seek that out in relationships. Yeah. So I absolutely love that. And it's also great if you allow somebody in relationship to show their inner child and they allow you. Isn't that beautiful? Like mm -hmm. I can be whoever I want. I can be very silly or I can be crying in your company. Like who cares? I can do all of these things. But sometimes we are so serious and it's like, why are you behaving like this? Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Like we are taking this very serious turn. And instead of seeing our relationship, no matter what happens in the world, 
in my work, no matter problems and seriousness in the world, my relationship can be that refuge. And no matter what is happening out there, I know when I come here, I will laugh, I will have joy, I will feel safe to be whoever I want to be in that moment. Exactly, exactly. And so the third and final question I have is, what's your own mantra or slogan for relationship management? And we can even, I guess, extend this out to life at large. Well, my, my ultimate mantra for everything is you can be, do, and have anything that you desire. Mm-hmm. So that is my ultimate mantra, and I apply that to everything. Because that really reminds me of who I am in my core. That really reminds me of my power. That really reminds me that I am creator of my life. And that also means that I'm creator of my relationship. That means that I can have relationship exactly as I want it to be. If I want my partner to be supportive, I am creating that. If I want my partner to adore me, I am creating that. Really that, I mean, that's my mantra for everything, for business, for relationship, mm-hmm. for love, for self-love, for <laughs> absolutely everything in my life. Because for me, that is the ultimate truth of who we are, why we are here, and yeah, who we can become if we choose to. I love that. Being limitless, creating the life that you want. All of these themes, I think, through, through these three questions of understanding that you are limitless once you start embracing this journey of understanding yourself, trying to build this inner self-confidence, this inner self-love, and being able to see the little pockets of yourself that are may seem silly, may seem childlike as you grow older, but being able to continue to embrace them and even accentuate them as you continue to grow older and how that can, you can be in alignment when it comes to that energy because you still are embracing those childlike uh, those childlike tendencies and behaviors, if you will. And, and yeah. so, you know, this entire conversation, Sandra, I've absolutely enjoyed it and loved having you on discussing a lot about the attractive energies we have in our life in terms of understanding how can you, you know, understanding the inner demons that we all face and deal with throughout life, being able to unpack them and be curious about trying to grow and develop and building this confidence so that you can get into the spiritual realm of continuing to grow and evolve and being able to be confident in yourself and that exudes in so many areas in your personal life and then it exudes into your love or li- love life and so you know sandra yeah. this has been such a great conversation uh you know for individuals the listeners the viewers if they're interested in working with you and or getting connected with you a bit more i'd love to have you share how they can get best connected with you well i first want to thank you for having me here because i absolutely love how you know, like how you are going in depth with all the questions and all the teams and all the topics. So yeah, for me, that is absolutely wonderful. So thank you for having me here and thank you for for your work first. And second, if somebody wants to connect with me, uh, of course, I'm on social media like all of us. <laughs> so they can find me mainly on Instagram and um, I'm spending a lot of time on TikTok as well. So I'm uh, at the Sandra Hay. Also, they can to see my website if they are looking for more information i have loads of freebies there and all the ways that they can work with me so that is um sandrahay.com that is my website they can go there and find all the information and also i would like to um gift to all your listeners especially if they are ladies and they are looking to find the guy i would like to give them a free love breakthrough call So that would be a call where we will dig deep and uncover what is stopping them from finding their partner. And then we will create a plan how they can get there, how they can get that relationship that they want. So if they are looking for that, it would be great if you can um, put that link in this Mm -hmm. episode description so they can find that. That is my gift to everyone who is listening. Definitely. Yeah, I will be for the listeners and viewers. I'll be linking all of those social media accounts or Sandra's website that free love breakthrough call, all those links down below in the show notes or description if you're viewing this on YouTube. And so, you know, Sandra, it's so generous of you to be giving out that free that free call and, you know, all of these freebie resources that you have. There's so many great, great tidbits and bits of information that individuals can seek out from all the services that you're offering. And, you know, this conversation, I think, is just a starting point for those who are looking to, to embark on our continue uh, embarking on this experience of being 
more self-loving, attracting greater confidence within, and being able to seek out a great loving relationship in their love life. And so I'd love to leave some time here at the end for you, Sandra, to leave any lasting messages you want to leave for the viewers and listeners. Well, I would really like to remind all of your listeners and viewers that, again, my mantra, that they can be, do, and have anything that they desire. And that is absolutely anything because ultimately we are creator of our life. We are creator of everything in our life, positive and negative things. So just think about that. You can create anything if that is more money or better relationship or new relationship or a partner or career, whatever it is. And when we would step into that power, even a small bit of that power and that mindset, I feel that our life would just shift and definitely we would be living that life that now we are dreaming of. Hey, everyone. My name is Shaman Raman, and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel today. I hope you found this episode of the Between Us podcast enjoyable and that you're walking away feeling entertained, inspired, and or motivated. If you particularly enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and smash the like button down below and leave your thoughts in the comments section. And if you'd like to go ahead and keep up with the podcast, go ahead and follow our social media. And please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. So that way you can find out about new episodes as soon as they're released. Until next time, everyone, take care, and we'll see you all in the next episode.